Dogmeat is a companion in the Fallout universe that everyone loves. Everyone who has played Fallout has at least used our beloved canine once in a playthrough. But can you beat Fallout 4 using only Dogmeat? Before we begin, a couple of rules need to be set. I cannot deal damage to anyone with a weapon, and I can only have dog meat as a companion this run. Today on Senza Answers Questions No One Has Ever Asked Before, we will see if we could beat Fallout 4 using arguably the worst companion in the game. Let's get to it! I made my character, spent time with a fam, and was bothered by a salesman. I named my character after a prolific human being that comments on my videos and then dumped my points into charisma, endurance, and intelligence. After that, I woke up in a vault and I wasn't really sure how I got here. Probably because I was roofied by that damn salesman, but whatever. Here I was, and I was ready to begin my journey. While down here in the vault, I realized that vault Tech really needs to work on their pest problem. I hid as the baddies looked for me, and then freed myself. Making my way back home was easy and seeing a friendly face was refreshing but I noticed a side of Codsworth I've never seen before like an irate mother asking for a manager he brought fury upon those poor little bloat flies I continued forward and got the most precious gem that was needed for this run my very own doggo we grouped up and it was an instant connection faithful companion by my side I was ready to take on the world until I fucking realized that dog meat hits like a soggy piece of bread in the early levels of the game I ran around and commanded dog meat to attack his prey, and it was actually sort of fun. This run was starting to seem like a twisted game of Pokemon, and I like that. We got to Kanye, and I chilled out as the boys talked it out. The raiders lost the argument, and I completed my first quest. Inside the house Kanye was defending, I ran into another problem. This fucker barely had any health in the early levels of the game, and I didn't have any stim packs to keep reviving him. So I had to do what I didn't want to resort to, the companion reset cheese. After Dogmeat turned the enemies into Puppy Chow, we met with Kanye, and he told me about his new mixtape. It was time to clear the yard. I grabbed my super suit, which is going to be super important this run, and gave Dogmeat the play of the game for being such a chad on that deathclaw. Except, I take back that MVP because he was literally a useless sack of potatoes. After spending about one hour sitting around, he finally did it, and now it was time to take a nap heal up and head to capital D city. Along the way I stepped out of my comfort zone and helped a bunch of bullies take advantage of a grandma. I felt bad about it at first, but they paid me for watching them film their pornography. The only way I'll be able to beat this challenge is if I pump my dog full of drugs and tetanus from dirty syringes. So I picked up a couple stim packs with the money they gave me and set off on my next venture. This wouldn't be a Papa Senza challenge without my usual quickie with a Toy Story cosplayer. Hey, it was worth it because you get free XP and loot. This should be enough to find my dog's drug addiction for the time being. Now that I used Buzz Lightyear for all his free loot, it was time to try something out that I was very curious about, if it was possible to get to the railroad early. But before we can continue, here's the plan this run, gentlemen. Power armor and stim packs are absolutely imperative this run. The power armor will be for my damage resistance and the stim packs will be for my Pokemon's adrenaline shots. We are basically a Pokemon trainer this challenge. This run will definitely be more tedious than drying a car in the rain, because dog meat literally does no damage early game and half of his attacks are grapples. This is not going to be a good one. I got to the old church and of course Dogmeat was nowhere to be found. So I went back to grab my power armor and then he appeared magically out of nowhere. It was time to see if I can make contact with the railroad early. Yeah. Woo. Get him boy. Oh. Oh. All right. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I finally got to the secret door and let them know that I do indeed eat ass. The railroad accepted me with open arms and I thought that it was pretty neat that you can get to them before even learning about their presence. Since I was there, I may as well continue on their quest line and get accepted. I met with Deacon on a blind date, explored a poo festered sewer, and quickly realized that Dogmeat had the same qualities as my father. They both seemed to always disappear for long periods of time. I got what Deacon was looking for and then got out of that hellhole. We went back to the railroad HQ and I was now a member of the Harriet Tubmans. I was feeling pretty freaking good. But now it was time to find my main man Nick. I talked with McDome lad, got Piper's number, stocked up on supplies so I can heal my Pokemon, and then went off to find that synth sweetheart. I anticipated that dog meat was going to be useless for majority of this run, so I ran through all the baddies healing up along the way whenever I had to. I finally got to Dino, and of course, when I finally confront him, Dogmeat is off somewhere beating his goddamn dog meat. Watching Doggo attempt to kill Dino was painful to say the least. This challenge is definitely 
not gonna be fun. I saved Nick, grabbed my Barbie, and sped to Skinny. Then I realized that Nick needed to open the doors along the way, so I cried a bit and sat back as the boys took out Skinny's men. We got to Skinny and I convinced his wifey that Skinny's dick game wasn't very good. Part of the reason I went with Charisma was to avoid confrontations like these. And you see, in a normal run through, that would have been the pacifist option so you didn't have to kill Malone and avoid the conflict altogether. But nope, everything has to give me a goddamn fucking headache. For some reason, Nick still attacked them after the speech check. I even reloaded a save and he did it. Again. After being tortured for 20 minutes, the boys gave it to him good, and then we returned Valentine to his mommy. This was the moment I noticed just how fucking god ugly I was. I'm not really sure how I feel about releasing this footage to the public. I sweet talked Don Lad to get the keys to Kellogg's apartment, and then proceeded to hunt him down. Finally, dog meat was useful for once instead of being a sack of potatoes. I pooped myself along the way because of a yao guai, but god bless Carla and the sacrifice she took to make sure Dogmeat and I could make it out of there alive. When we arrived at Fort Hagen, I first had to go back and stock up on supplies. After a few vendor resets later, I was ready and here was the plan. I think we could all agree that Dogmeat is about as useless as a father without money for child support. So I booked it straight to Kellogg and stemmed myself along the way, baby. Let's go! I made it no problem. And now it was time for my first Pokemon gym battle. Dogmeat versus Kellogg, the moment we've all been waiting for. We began the battle and Dogmeat was popping off at first, until he got the fucking revive glitch. After trying multiple times, screaming vulgar things, using 32 stim packs, and just praying to RN Jesus that he uses damaging attacks and not the grapple, that little turd finally did it. Woo! Get shit on you, pussy! It was now time for another vendor reset on stim packs and to pay good neighbor a visit. I swayed a super mean bully, talked to a doctor, and then explored Kellogg's wet dreams. He dreams of little boys, by the way. I traveled to the irradiated sea, found my boy toy Virgil the Virgin, and was told about the coarser problem Dogmeat had to take care of. It was now time to watch Dogmeat assert his canine dominance all over that coarser's face. Getting the green tech was pretty easy, and you want to know what was even easier? Getting through the place because I'm fast as fuck, boy. I made it through all of green tech, bum rushing past all the enemies and burning through stims. It was finally time to meet my blind Tinder date. You know, Z247 was pretty handsome, but it was interesting because I didn't take him as the type of guy that liked to fuck dogs. He literally fucked dog meat so good, he ended up here. How is that even possible? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> After what felt like 3 hours, Dogmeat finally did it. Unfortunately, he made me use 34 stim packs, but he actually did it. Man's best friend? <laughs> no, 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 no. More like man's best murderer. With Courser Chip now in my possession, I got it analyzed and was told to get some plans from Virgil. I found a home for my giant 3D printer, built it, and went to say hi to father. I was finally inside the institute. He busted his fat old man love in my presence, and then I met his fellow churchgoers for the free XP. Inside the church of father, I found a guy inside a closet. He wanted to come clean to his parents, and he wanted out of that closet. I went back to mom, and she forced me to go find her cheat codes for GTA San Andreas. I waited for a vendor reset to get some stim packs, and I was ready to roll. Dogmeat and I got into a little toughy, but as a duo, we were unstoppable, so I wasn't even worried. My Pokemon used Quick Attack a little too hard, I guess, and he slapped this bot into a deep paralysis. I noped out when she resurrected and gave Mongul the cheat codes. We devised a plan together, and I absolutely needed to get my closet buddy in on this. I joined him in the closet once again, gave it to him good, and then gave his buddy a day to decide whether he would like to join or not. He said yes, but he wanted me to kill a bunch of guards. And here, this was the difficult part, baby. Always happens. Yes! Yes! Here's a problem with this quest. Dogmeat isn't allowed down here in the Institute, and I had no idea how to make these guards aggro. I was going to give up on the railroad quest line, but in my final moments, I had a universe brain epiphany, and here was the solution. I needed to get a syringer, a couple berserk darts, and force them to fight each other. I'm going to be technically injecting them, and not dealing any damage. So let's do this, boys. So... <sighs> Yeah, that plan didn't work, but it seems like plan B took his forceful hands upon me, and, you know, I like a big strong man. The best part is that synths don't actually die, so they kept getting up and beating them to death. Frick yeah, boy, get him! 
Get him! After watching the deathmatch, I was to continue being a double agent, just like Sam Fisher in Splinter Cell. Time to go catch me a naughty synth. I just ran past all the enemies, took a nice swim, told the fucker to come back home or he was grounded, and after that, the courser and the doggo killed everyone. Reporting back to father, he gave me wind of an attack on Bunker Hill, and I went straight to tell my mommy. Bunker Hill was simple, because I was evenly sided with everyone. I freed the synths and got Dogmeat and the others to be my white knight and kill the courser for me. I rendezvoused with father on the roof, and he told me some nonsense about how he got a good deal on a vacuum cleaner and a charcoal grill. Father tasked me with mass fusion, and that made me sad because I hate that place. But first, I needed a new suit of armor. After grabbing my armor and running through Mass Fusion a bit, I forgot to record, as always. I realized that the first part of Mass Fusion was going to be impossible, so I made a few more berserk syringes and set off. I ran to the reactor room with dog meat close behind, and then after grabbing the agitator, I locked them inside with the sentry bot. The Hunger Games has now started. I believe in you, brave souls. Hey, dog meat, are you okay in there, buddy? Here. Let me help you out a bit there. After they took out the sentry bot, I found out the assaultrons needed to die too. So I rounded them up and put them back into the gangbang room and AFK'd till they were all dead. I bolted out of mass fusion, convinced a mad scientist that everything was okay and he was not balding, and then gave my speech. It was time to finish up this challenge. I warned Mongul about the impending attack, and hey, once you look at that, what a coincidence. The Brotherhood of Hype Beast decided to join us. I watched as the homies and dog meat took out the Brotherhood and then met with Tinker Tom to take out even more. Sincerely, if you guys are interested in knowing, I spent almost two hours and a half in this section of the game. I even had dog meat stuck in a door and Tinker Tom tinker out on life for a quick second. My Pokemon and Deacon went ham on the roof and I ran around as a medic. It was now time to take out the Brotherhood of Hype Beast. I stocked up on supplies and set off. We flew to the Pridwin and I literally just ran around planting explosives. I got back to my ship clenching everything I had left of my booty hole and then watched the fireworks. The Brotherhood of Hype Beast are done and over with. It was now time. The nuclear option, baby. I got to the institute, instigated a doctor with the syringe I made during my stock up run, and let the boys in motion in. I was a little sad because it looks like Dogmeat wouldn't be joining me on this conquest. The boys in motion stormed the institute and Desdemongul got pounded by a bunch of synth gorillas. Oh yeah, baby. Woo! Ugh, yes! I watched his mom took out the synths in the final room, and it was done. We blew our baby gravy on the Institute. You can beat Fallout 4 using only dog meat. As long as you enjoy playing Pokemon, healing all day, and literally spending hours at a time waiting for dog meat to kill people. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the headache I endured this playthrough. Stay tuned for next week's video where we take matter into our own hands and attempt to help Skinny Malone with his dick game.